Welcome to the B Raider Radial Keyboard App Tutorial. This version 1 keyboard app runs on Android devices operating on Android version 2.2 and upwards. The keyboard app is best suited for use on tablet devices and smartphones with larger screens and the tutorial shows the app running on a Samsung Galaxy Ace 2 smartphone and a Cambridge Science 7 inch tablet device. Further detailed information along with a buy link is available from B Raiders website. Let's start with a quick look at the app running on both the smartphone and tablet devices. Make sure the radial keyboard is your default keyboard. Launch any app that uses text editing and the radial keyboard will appear whenever you begin to enter text. Let's now look at the keyboard in portrait and landscape modes on both devices. For the sake of clarity, I'll continue the tutorial using the larger screen tablet. Before starting the tutorial, it's worth pointing out the main features of the radial keyboard. As a keyboard, it's been designed to be logical, efficient and ergonomic. The space key is centrally located and it's surrounded by five concentric circles of keys. The first concentric circle holds the main modifier keys. There are three separate shift keys at the bottom of the layout and they all operate in sticky mode. This means that you don't have to hold them down when entering a combination character. This is designed to save you time when typing. The key label shift operates in the usual manner. The key label select right allows you to access those characters located on the bottom right of any relevant keycap. The key labelled right shift allows you to access those characters located on the top right of any relevant keycap. This approach allows for a more compact keyboard layout, which saves finger travel time. The escape key located at the top left of the keyboard layout can be used from time to time to find your bearings. It clears the keyboard from the display, allowing you to see the full screen contents. The keyboard will reappear when you start typing again. A separate set of cursor keys located at the bottom right of the keyboard layout allow for ease of navigation. On the bottom left of the keyboard layout are four additional keys. The caps and numlock keys operate as expected and each have their own active LED indicator. A separate delete key is also provided along with a microphone style icon. When this is activated the device will go into listening mode. The user can then speak a word or phrase for recognition. On the top right of the keyboard layout is the keyboard key which allows access to the various language keyboard layouts. Note that the default language keyboard is the US standard QWERTY layout. There are a total of 8 layouts available. The first 4 are English keyboard layouts, with the remaining 4 being keyboard layouts for French, German, Spanish and Italian. The second keyboard layout option is the US Standard Efficient layout. This particular layout has been optimized by B-Raider to cater for the frequency of occurrence of the alpha characters, that is the alphabet characters, in the English language. It's designed to minimize finger travel and thereby increase the user's typing efficiency. Let's select it for typing and see what it looks like. You should be able to memorize this layout in about 10 to 20 minutes, after which time your finger muscle memory will develop over a few short weeks of use. See our support web page. The aim is to enable you reach a point where you should no longer have to look at the keyboard when typing. In effect, you'll become your own self-taught touch typist. Find out much more about this particular layout on our website. If we look again at the available keyboard layouts, we can see that the third and fourth options listed are the US International and US International Efficient, respectively. You can think of these layouts as being similar to the two keyboard layouts just described, but with the added benefit of providing access to various foreign alpha characters. 
We'll look at these layouts in more detail later, but for the time being we'll stick with the default US standard QWERTY keyboard layout and press the cancel button to exit the keyboards list. Let's see how this works then. Now let's see how that looks without the keyboard. Press the escape key. Continue typing by tapping the screen at the next text entry point. Of course you can use the cursor keys to navigate your way around this text. Now let's see how we can copy and paste text. Press the control key and it's screen led lights to indicate that the key is active and waiting for a valid combination input from the user. Now press the A key to highlight all of the text. Press the control key again and then press the C key to copy the highlighted text. Position the cursor to where you want to insert this text. Press the control key again and then press the V key to paste the copy text. Let's see how that looks without the keyboard being on screen. Press the escape key. Continue typing by tapping the screen at the next text entry point. OK, let's now look at the operation of the ALT key. This key allows you to enter the ASCII code for characters in the extended ASCII code table. Press the ALT key and its green LED lights to indicate that the key is active and waiting for a valid combination input from the user. Enter 333 and notice how an error message appears on screen to tell you that you must enter a valid ASCII code whose number must fall within the range from 0 to 255. You can easily access many foreign characters along with other character symbols using this feature if you know the relevant ASCII codes. Check out an extended ASCII code table. Now let's look at the keys located at the bottom left of the keyboard layout. Press the caps lock key and its green LED light lights to indicate that the key is active. As you'd expect it gives you capitals when you type any of the alpha characters. OK Press the caps lock key again and its light turns off to indicate that it is no longer active. The num lock key operates in a similar way. Pressing this key places the keyboard in numeric mode where only the numeric numbers and the numeric operators are available for use. Press the key again to deactivate it. The delete key operates in the usual way and allows you to delete characters ahead of the cursor position. This is in contrast to the backspace key, which allows characters behind the cursor to be deleted. Let's now look at the operation of the shift keys. Notice that the keys pressed in combination with the shift key produces capital letters. The shift key operates in sticky mode, which means that you don't have to hold it down while pressing a combination character. The select right key allows access to all the characters shown on the bottom right corner of the keys. For example, you can access the numeric and arithmetic characters. The right shift key allows access to all the characters shown on the top right corner of the keys. OK, so let's now look at the US international layout. Remember that this layout provides access to a whole range of foreign characters. Press the keyboard button to invoke the list of available keyboard layouts and select the US International layout. Notice that it has an Alt G R key. When activated its green LED lights, notice how the available character set changes to a foreign character set. As you might expect, the Shift key allows access to any character located in the top left corner of any relevant keycap. You'll notice that there are certain characters which are coloured red in the US international layout.
These are known as dead keys. When typed on their own, they don't produce a displayed character. These dead key characters are known as diacritical marks and they are used to produce a variety of foreign language characters based on a number of existing standard alphabet characters. For example, the result gives us the displayed character E circumflex, which is a lower case E modified with a circumflex. To get the capital version of this character, this displays the capital version of this character, E capital circumflex. There are five dead characters in total, these being circumflex, acute, double acute, tilde and grave. These can be used to produce a range of valid foreign language characters. Be sure to use the correct shift key when selecting them. We'll now have a brief look at another English language keyboard layout along with the four foreign language keyboard layouts. Recall again that there is no optimised keyboard provided for any language other than the English language. Note how the character layout has changed from the familiar standard QWERTY layout. This is the optimised layout, which is designed to facilitate data entry typing efficiency. You can memorise this layout in 10 to 20 minutes. Think of the benefits of this if you are currently one of the 60% of people who hunt and peck with one or two fingers on the QWERTY keyboards because they don't know where the alpha characters are located on the QWERTY keyboard layout. This is because of its illogical character layout. OK, we'll just take a quick look now at one of the four available language keyboards. Well that about concludes the tutorial. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to visit BRaider's website where you can purchase the app and learn more about this unique keyboard design.